Hey, I'm David Smith. On behalf of House to House, Heart to Heart, we welcome you to the reading of the January issue of House to House, Heart to Heart by Alan Webster, an article entitled, Is Church Membership Essential to Salvation? Hang on, we'll be right back after the break. Church membership has fallen on hard times. Fewer people are members today than in previous generations. Nonetheless, God has not lost interest in the church. This is where He waits to bless people with all spiritual blessings. The Bible teaches that church membership is essential. It does not teach that membership in any denomination is essential or even acceptable. Before you dismiss this article as dogmatic or think its author should be marginalized, ostracized, dismissed, or pitied, consider a few thoughts. Salvation is God's gift on God's terms. People think that since there are good people who do not belong to any church, no church is necessary. The question is, does morality equal salvation? Being good does not save anyone in the church or out. Cornelius had high morals but needed Christ to be saved. Man's opinions will not matter when God hands out destinies. Human reason runs counter to divine wisdom. The Lord said, My thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Only God can save. He gave His Word so we can know about His church, and He gave His church so that we can know about His Word. The Bible is His map to heaven. Church membership is God's prerogative. People speak of joining the church, but this is not how church membership works. A student cannot say, I, I think I will join the National Honor Society. A baseball player cannot say, I am joining the all-star team this year. One must qualify and be invited. A sinner cannot join the church. God adds its members. The Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. Only He decides membership. No Bible congregation, not even the apostles, voted on candidates for membership. Well, Someone might say, join the church just means to pick a church in your area. It is true Christians must find a congregation of God's people with which to worship and work. Becoming a member of a local denomination is not the same thing as being a member of Christ's church. Church roles will not be used at judgment to determine entrance into heaven. Jesus will consult the Lamb's book of life. Many on church rolls will be surprised to find that they were not in His book. Christ's membership is church membership. If one can be saved out of the church, he can be saved out of Christ. But one must be in Christ to be saved. To be in Christ is to be in His body. And to be in His body is to be in the church. One must be in the church to be in Christ and it is impossible to be in Christ without being in the church. Since being in Christ is identical to being in the church, no one can be saved outside of Christ's church. The church is not the Savior, but Christ is its Savior. Peter's sermon on the church's inauguration day shows that salvation and church membership are simultaneous events. Peter convinced many that they had killed God's Son whom God raised. They desired forgiveness and salvation, asking, What shall we do? Peter answered, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Three thousand gladly received His word and were baptized, and that day about three thousand souls were added to them. Subsequently, the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Thus, the church was where God put every person He saved. The world is under condemnation, so He transfers a saved person from there to the kingdom of His Son a place of no condemnation. Both remission and membership occur at a penitent believer's baptism. God adds His new child's name to the book of life at His new birth. Follow this logically. If God adds those He saves to His Son's church, then all Christians are church members, and there are no saved people outside of the church, since only God saves. By definition, the church is the saved. The church does not save us. The church is the saved. Membership in the church is not the means of salvation. It is the result of salvation. The church is not our Savior. Christ is, but Christ saves only the church. 
All God's eggs are in one basket. All spiritual blessings are in heavenly places. Where is that? Heavenly places are in Christ, the equivalent of being in His body, the church. What spiritual blessings are found in the church? Well, no condemnation, Romans 8.1. Sanctification, 1 Corinthians 1.2. Being made new creatures, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Redemption, Ephesians 1.7. Forgiveness, Ephesians 1.7. An inheritance, Ephesians 1.11. Providential care, Ephesians 1.19. Including material blessings, Reconciliation, Ephesians 2.16. Access to God and His temple. The church is the habitation of God. He dwells in Christians. All of God's promises, indwelling of Christ, indwelling of the Spirit, names enrolled in heaven, salvation, treasures, completeness, spiritual life. Spiritual blessings are unavailable in the world. Those outside Christ are dead in sins, without hope and without God. Those in the church are made alive in Christ and reconciled to God. People cannot be saved without these blessings, so they must get to where the blessings are. Think of God's Swiss army knife. The church is the consummation of God's eternal purpose. It is the fullness of Christ. A careful look at the New Testament shows the church everywhere. As to government, the church is a kingdom. Christ was born to be a king. He was crowned as a king. Thus His church is called the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom is spiritual, not of this world. If one can be saved out of the church, then he can be saved out of the kingdom. As to organization, the church is a body. Christ, the Savior of the body, only those in the body, He gave His blood for it. So the church equals the value of Christ's life. An item is of equal value to its purchase price. Was that blood paid for an unessential entity? Membership in the body is vital because access to Christ's blood is in the body. A cleansed sinner is put in his blood-bought body where the blood keeps him clean as he walks in the light. Salvation is only through blood. Life is in the blood. In relation to the world, the church is the called out. There are two spiritual kingdoms. Satan's world and Christ's church. The church, ecclesia, refers to those called from the former into the latter. If people can be saved out of the church, then they can be saved in the world, but the world is lost. As to family, the church is God's family and Christ's bride. God is a father. Saints are His children. The church is His household. Christ is preparing the church for her wedding day when she will be presented as His glorious bride, free from sin, holy and blameless. Out of the shadows, into the light. Old Testament institutions, events, and characters were recorded for our learning. They served as a shadow of the good things to come. In them, God often placed salvation in a location. Noah's family could only be saved in the ark. Rahab had to remain in the house with the scarlet cord. A manslayer was only safe in a city of refuge. The city of refuge is a type of the church of Christ. Three parallels between them include the following. The church is a sanctuary for the sanctified. Those in Christ are in a sure refuge from condemnation. They are protected by the Lamb's blood. Satan's claws cannot snatch God's child from God's hands. Sinners can escape death only by fleeing to the church. In ancient Israel, a manslayer could not go to his town's civil authorities for help, nor could he rush to the local synagogue. His only hope lay in getting to one of the six cities of refuge before the avenger got to him. Our only hope lies in Christ and His church. A manslayer had to remain in the city to remain safe. Picture the avenger, angry over his loss, lingering outside the city of perhaps sharpening his knife under a tree. He cannot harm his target in the city, but he hopes the manslayer will get bored and visit home. Then the avenger could kill him without reprisal. One must continue in the church by obedience to the Word until life ends. Christians are warned about drawing back to perdition. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? 
an open door policy. Christ's invitation to sinners is open 24-7, 365 until His return. Then the door will be forever shut. All become members of Christ's church the same way. They hear the gospel. They believe Jesus to be the Christ, repent of sins, confess Jesus as Lord, and are baptized for the remission of sins. At that point, they are called Christians. The true value of church membership is inestimable. One who gives all he has for it has secured a great bargain. Membership pays a hundredfold in this life. And what price could be fixed for the value of heaven? All things are ready. The gates are always open. But the opportunity may pass at any time. If you are outside safety, flee for refuge in God's church today.